Do you have all your money before you start filming your movie? This TikTok is in response to a statement that uh, this gentleman makes right here. The dirty little secret about film financing and, and getting your movie off the floor, that is getting your movie in the can, is that you should, in fact, should start filming your film before you're, quote, 100% financed. Try to stitch this, but TikTok kills the audio when your response goes past a certain length. I don't know why. Oh, I want to unpack this claim. There's a lot of caveats in there. There's some truth in it. There are certainly people in the industry who get close enough to their strike price, to their budget, and then just push the movie through and go. But there are a lot of potentially very bad things that can happen from doing that. I've been a film financier for quite some time, and typically it is the other producers who are bringing their movie to us to get finance. So we are typically the money in the movies that we are producing. So what does that mean? Well, it means every week people are bringing me packages uh, with a script, with cast attached, with a pitch deck, and a finance plan, and they're asking us to finance all or part of their movie. One scenario where this happens, where you go into production without having all of your money, probably the most common scenario, I'm guessing this is the one he's referring to. One where say you've got a $4 million movie and you've got a little bit of equity, you've got the tax credits, you've got some pre-sales, uh, and say all that totals up to like 3.7 million, but you have $500,000 of that 400 or producer's fees, right? Well, those producers can get together and decide, we're just gonna make the movie go, we're going to defer X amount of our fees until later, until after uh, the lenders are paid back, et cetera, uh, and we'll just go forward at $3.7 million. It's a perfectly fine scenario. It happens all the time. Uh, it, I don't really look at it as going into production with not all of your money. I just look at it as going into production on a movie with a smaller budget. There are certainly other versions of this where uh, the budget is kind of a sham budget, you know, it's, you know, there are budgets I see that just aren't uh, reflective of what the true cost of the movie are going to be. And they've been sort of artificially reduced in order to get a financier pregnant. So once you're in, once you've paid, you know, whatever, half a million, a million for the actors, then you're in it and you've got to finish the movie uh, to get your value out of it. Right. So um, this, this is where a lot of the big bad evil financier stuff comes into play because essentially producers uh, have chosen to misrepresent what the true cost of the movie was going to be uh, and there are many ways to do that uh, there are many smart ways to do that uh, and then you get the financier pregnant and then once they have x amount of dollars at risk they are sort of in it and have to uh, do something, either accept that the movie is going to go over budget, which depending on the movie, they may be okay with. They may just come in and be like, nope, we're going to hack this plan down uh, because you misrepresented what the cost of this movie was going to be. Your plan wasn't accurate. And so we have to come in and make adjustments during the production period because um, we see that it's going to be, you know, whatever, 130% of the budget that you presented to us, and that's unacceptable. It needs to be the number we greenlit the movie at. If you're the director of this project, uh, you may have left all this up to the producers, right? Uh, and you can be super excited. Your movie is going, uh, and the producers are making the financiers seem like the bad guy. But uh, the truth is that they're adults. They know what's going on. They know what movies cost, and they simply represented a plan for a movie that could not be made at the budget they got a greenlit at. Now, who's gonna be responsible for this? Well, it's gonna be the creative team, primarily the director, who for better or worse gets all the blame, all the praise for the quality of the movie. What's the part of the process that typically gets shortchanged the most? Well, it tends to be post, just because it's at the end of the process and it's the last you know, 20% of the process. And if you only go to war with 80% of your budget, guess what? That's the 20% that's going to be left over. Just talk to people who work in post-production. They'll tell you how many times people come to them hat in hand and say they don't have any money. It is true that you can uh, do some in-kind deals. And, you know, there are, there are some ways you can be cost efficient in the post-production process. But at the end of the day, uh, if you are shortchanging post, you're not giving your team time enough to truly edit the movie. You're not getting a, a top flight uh, post sound team that's really going to bring the images alive with tremendous design. You guys, sound design is so important. Um, you're not going to be able to get the music you want. Uh, you, you know, it's just 
whenever you're cutting post short, you are just strangling the movie in the crib. It is such an important part of delivering a great film that will be good enough for you to build your career on and go to the next movie. All of that is to say, try to get 100% of your budget before you go to war. Now, there are, of course, some producers who are very good. This guy may be one of them where, you know, you can go into production with only 80, 85% of your money and you know what your options are. You know where you can go to put together that last, you know, 15, 20% of the money you need to meet your budget. But if you don't have a strong producer in your corner, a veteran who understands finance, who understands what they're doing in this area, uh, it is very difficult to, uh, to figure out your movie at the end, uh, I promise you. Aren't these magical places you can go to get finishing funds? They're just not out there. There's no finance place that specializes in finishing funds. And if they do, they're gonna come in and take way more value out of your movie than you want them to, I promise. They have entities in the industry, uh, maybe a sales company, maybe a producer, maybe a financier, uh, and they basically hang out like vultures and look for projects like this so they can come in, harvest uh, all the value that they want out of it, uh, put up a tiny amount of money or a tiny amount of in-kind services. They capture a lot of the value and then whoever your equity is. Uh, and if this is your first film, it's probably, you know, like people's first companies, you went to, you know, friends and family to raise the money. They're all gonna sit behind the interests of the person providing finishing funds. In almost all cases, if you've got 80 or 85% of your money, it's better to find smart cuts and creative solutions to your existing plan to make the movie and get the budget down underneath the amount of money you know you will have before you start shooting. Seriously, if I had $10 for every documentary, uh, bootstrapped feature, uh, I mean, look, even, you know, million dollar feature that doesn't have enough money to finish the movie, come in and ask him for finishing funds. I would be a rich, rich man. It is fairly common and, you know, sometimes they they do figure it out, but frequently it's in a less than optimal situation than they would like. You know, frequently they're not able to do what they want to do to finish the movie properly and uh, just go on to the next stage of their career with a truly great movie under their belt. New filmmakers, the, the caveat to all this is that you don't need 100% of your budget in equity to get your movie going really only need maybe 25 or 30 percent of it in equity and you can actually go borrow the rest of the money so you know on a movie that is say like a million dollars uh you only need like you know 300 in equity and with that amount of money you can go get uh casts that are going to make it a safe investment you can go get a domestic pre-sale you can go sell some of foreign you've got your tax credits and then you can go get a loan against all of those things to come up with the other six, seven hundred thousand dollars that you need to get to your million dollar budget. So you don't need a million dollars to make a million dollar movie. You only need like maybe 250 or 300. The bar is not as high as you think it needs to be in order to make a, a good low budget movie and have enough money to make it. It's not as high as you think it needs to be, but you do need to know where all of your money is going to come from. Uh, and you need to stay on budget and have a strong plan to be able to do that in order to make a great film. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.